This week on CrossFeed, our fourth anniversary episode. Obama and the separation of church and state. None fired over abortion. Texas School Board and Jesus. Facebook and Muhammad. Methodists and iPhone. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our fourth anniversary episode of CrossFeed Religious News. I'm Pastor Dale Critchley, pastor of Shepherd of the Ridge Lutheran Church in North Ridgeville, Ohio. Hey, everybody, Pastor Jim Butler at uh, St. Luke's Lutheran Church in Dedham, Massachusetts. Tonight, because I have no electricity in my dining room or my family room, I'm live at the church. So, um, Jim's converted to um, become Amish. <laughs> well, we're converting to having our uh, getting the kitchen done, and uh, as soon as it's done, a couple more weeks, uh, we'll be in good shape. So, anyway, this is we've been doing this for four years now, or roughly the twenty. Well, let's see, today's twenty third. Um, it's like the twenty sixth. So, depending on when this gets out, you might actually get it a day before that. But, um, but yeah, four years. Which is just how ridiculously stubborn we are. <laughs> I don't know. And I was thinking how ridiculously desperate for anybody who's been listening to this for four years. <laughs> that's, my, that's funny. The, my sermon uh, this morning was uh, it, it was called God's Social Network, and it was it was sort of like uh, what if Jesus had Twitter? And <laughs> but um, you know, it, it was it talked a lot about narcissism and. Um, you know how how much we're like look at me, look at me, because um, the people of the Tower of Babel, you know, it was it was sort of like a, you know Twitter in Genesis that they were saying look at me, look at me, and uh, <laughs> so so yeah yeah here we are for four years we've been going listen to me please listen to me. <laughs> I don't know, man. Twitter just struck me as being the most narcissistic thing in the world but we won't go there because certain people who host this show are on twitter but we won't talk about that so oh, uh, man i i'll tell you though i was when i was writing this sermon i was and using twitter as an example i was i was looking up like some like the the twitter timeline the main like where all of the posts you can read them in uh basically real time uh, all over the world and so I was looking on there for sort of examples of, of this sort of typical, um, uh, stereotypical Twitter stuff. What I found, um, a lot of it was not so much the sort of stereotypical I'm brushing my hair kind of thing. Um, it was the kind of stuff that I could not repeat in a sermon. Ooh! <laughs> I'm just like, ew! <laughs> so, like, oh, this is not good. <laughs> Which like really made the point that I was trying to make in in a lot of ways, but it wasn't the sort of thing that I could use where there's like children present, you know. Like, yeah, this isn't gonna work. I'm gonna have to figure something else out. Disgusting. So, mm, I don't know. I just wonder what would Glenn Beck have said about it. Okay. All right. And I was There's a transition. All right. Well, I, I see you think, or, or, or let's go. Let's go to the. Is there an app for that? Let's talk about the Methodists and the apps. So we'll also we'll stay. There you uh, go. Maybe the Methodists need to get Twitter. <laughs> oh, they do have Twitter. The, the article specifically says that um, the the Methodist Church is already offers online Bible studies, publishes several blogs, and regularly updates its Twitter account. Okay, that's true. So, by the way, so. Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod does, too, just as a little sidebar there. They've got their own Twitter feed. Yeah, well, we know we're a bunch of twits anyways. <laughs> so now the Methodist has jumped into the pool with everybody else. Um, with The United Methodist Church has come up with their own uh, official iPhone app. Uh, it offers free daily prayers and Bible, stu- Bible study sessions. Uh, uses the Word in Time Bible study course, which is authored by a different person every week in order to offer a unique reflection on the day's chosen passage. And users can either read the material or download each passage as a podcast. So, it sounds cool. It also has, uh, uh, the, it has, the prayers are, oh, where did it say that? 
um, brief but challenging prayer every day. Yeah, brief but um, challenging. I, I like that idea, a challenging prayer, you know. Those sort of prayer, it's sort of like when Jesus said, you know, the, the harvest is plenty, but the workers are few. Uh, pray to the Lord of the harvest that he will send workers into the field. Now go. <laughs> like, your prayer has been answered. You're it. <laughs> You know, so yeah, pray things that are difficult to pray. So, so I like that idea. Um, unfortunately, I don't have an iPhone, or I would definitely check this out and probably use it because it sounds really neat. Um, but uh, they they do. Do mention, you hear that, people? <laughs> donate to the cause, right there. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, uh, Church stressed that technology should help complement but not replace traditional worship. All right, this is something that we've been dealing with, um, that uh, we've been trying to stream our services. We've been running into some problems. Basically, our hardware is not up to snuff, so if you want to donate to a cause, that's what we need the most. Um, but uh, the, by, by streaming the services, I have occasionally got a comment – all right. On the one hand, I've gotten from people who are like sick or something like that that there's they can't make it, and like, oh, good, I can at least watch it online. I mean, I had somebody in the hospital um, this week who, you know, most hospitals have Wi-Fi nowadays, and and he said, well, I'm not going to make it to church because we have Wednesday night service, and he said, I'll just watch the stream. Now, of course, we had streaming problems, so he wasn't able to, but um. But, you know, it's there, and we've got people, you know, some of their kids are sick or, or something like that. But then once in a while you get somebody who says, uh, I don't want to get up that early to get the kids all ready and everything, so I'm just going to watch it online instead. Like, all right, that's not the point of it. You know? So it's had its pros and cons. Um, we did we did uh, have a couple that, um, that came to... Um, to check us out after seeing uh, what was going on on our website, and they were impressed with it, and, and so they came in uh, two w- weeks in a row, actually. So I was pretty excited about that. Um, that that you know, I think the interesting thing about all this is we set this up um, to be to do a sort of you know global outreach, and while we are uh, with our various Bible studies and stuff, we are um, getting uh, hits from all over the world. Um, that local people have been checking it out too. And, um, so it's not just a, a global thing or, you know, it's, it, but, uh, in fact, one of our, we were talking about, we created, um, a, we basically have two evangelism boards now. Um, although we're still working on getting people for the second one, but we have, um, I was going to call it a local and a global, um, evangelism boards um but then one of the elders said you know really if the the one is is sort of focused on using the internet as an evangelism tool you should say live evangelism which is focused on doing like visits and and things like that um versus a cyber evangelism he said because you know just because you're doing it online doesn't mean it's not going to reach people locally and which as it turns out is absolutely true and actually, I was watching a, a um, video uh, by Rick Warren was doing a presentation, and he said that's exactly um, the case, that they get their online stuff, they get more local people uh, checking it out and and taking advantage of it than, um, you know, that are not local. So You can call it geek evangelism. <laughs> Well, you know, when when you're using, you know, we've, we're uh, building in Facebook integration into our site and things like that. And, you know, Facebook is, you know, my mom's on Facebook and my mom is not a geeky person at all. Right. But she's on it. And granted, there's plenty of people that aren't. And, and the fact that I use Facebook and Twitter as a um, as a sermon illustration this morning, I was a little nervous about doing that because I know that the majority of our members are not on it. And so, you know, I had to be careful how I used it so that I didn't make all sorts of assumptions and, and things like that. And kind of had to, had to explain things without getting bogged down with definitions and stuff like that. So 
Um, but no, I, I think this is really great. I, I, I love, I, I want to see churches do more of this kind of stuff. Um, kudos to the Methodists. Um, hey, out, out there in the, um, the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, hey, let's, you know, we should have one. Why don't we have one out there yet? You know, although I have to say, Missouri Synod has been at the forefront, um, in a lot of ways, at least, um, on the, on the sort of, um, Official, not 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 churches necessarily, but um, we have one of the best denominational websites out there. It's just extremely useful. Lots of information, uh, you know, directories and all kinds of things like that. Um, well organized for the most part. Um, we we've got you know an official Twitter feed and Facebook page. Uh, Concordia Publishing House is starting to do some pretty cool things. Um, with they've got now they've got a an online confirmation curriculum that looks kind of cool. I have my own that I designed, so you know I'm not going to use theirs, but it it looks pretty cool. Um, so I mean we've oh and and I think our se- our seminary was one of the first schools on iTunes U. Um, uh, not only were we for one of the first ones on it, we were actually approached by Apple. Really? Yes. <clears throat> yes, they were actually approached by Apple to do it. Maybe it's because Steve Jobs grew up Lutheran, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, they were actually approached by iTunes about it. And uh, so you can, uh, it's it's quite, back in the 19, late 1990s, <clears throat> you know, when the web was really just beginning to really gear up, um, or is it early 2000s? One or the other. But um, actually, we won uh, a national award for our website design. Yep, yep. Because it was that. considered to be uh, considered to be such one of the best out there. Uh, of course, you know. See, I I remember Dale. Dale was telling me he's got four gigs of RAM in his computer now. I remember when I thought it was really cool that I had two megs of RAM. <laughs> Um, okay, my, well, okay, my first computer. And that was in my first Mac, and I remember a 64K Commodore, you know, it was the old Commodore 64. Well, my first computer was an Apple IIe that, like, had a, a RAM card in it, but I didn't know what to do with it. So it had, like, double the RAM, but I didn't know how to use it or why I would use it or anything. It just came that way because it was oh. used. But um, at the time, sixty-four K. That's all we thought we needed, or whatever we'd need. Yeah, but you know, yeah, my first Mac was um, had four megs of RAM. You could upgrade it by putting a total of twelve in it. You could get ten out of it. I still have the free T-shirt that I got um, when I got that RAM through a deal with where Kingston Memory and Microsoft had a, some sort of joint. Uh, deal and and I got a free T-shirt when I bought the RAM, <laughs> but uh, an eighty meg hard drive. All right. So talking about uh, Twitter and and Facebook, uh, let's jump over to Facebook actually, and uh, and celebrate. We're we're a few days late, but let's celebrate Draw Muhammad Day. <laughs> right now, you got to understand this. This really started out as a joke. Okay, this goes back to. Uh, there's an episode of South Park, which I'm sure Dale has watched every episode of, but I never even cared to. Um, but uh, in which uh, they were supposed to show Muhammad and they didn't. They uh, uh, and, and and basically um, because of you know radical Islamists, which the Obama administration says doesn't exist. But that's beside the point. Uh, and if we're frozen. Sorry about that, everybody. Uh, you know, just um, although um, you know they're. Pictures of Muhammad have existed. I mean, it's 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 really kind of a farcical thing. But anyway, so um, like on his Wikipedia page, yeah, there's a picture so, of him. So there was a uh, 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 so there was this um, uh, uh, in response. There was a uh, everyone. This woman uh, jokingly uh, on something put down. Uh, yeah, we should have every, you know, everyone draw Muhammad Day, and she gave a date for it. And then a few days later, she's like, I wasn't serious. You know, she's like an editorial cartoonist. She goes, I wasn't serious. Well, others had taken up the cry, particularly uh, Andrew Breitbart and uh, 
his big rust, big government, big journalism, big Hollywood websites. They were the ones who really picked up on it and ran with it. Mm-hmm. And so there got to be a Facebook group called um, um, Everyone Draw Muhammad Day. And then, of course, there was the uh, another Facebook group called uh, um, Everybody Against. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, against Everybody Draw Muhammad Day. One had the first one had seventy nine thousand members. The last one had about ninety thousand. Um, and this person writing on Fox News, who I've never heard of her before, um, uh, she says she's an attorney, justified right. I have no idea. I've never heard of her before. And she's saying this is religious hatred. She says, um, uh, uh, um, you know that. Um, uh, uh, Muslims feel an insult when they see a drawing of Muhammad similar to what Christians felt like when, uh, 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 there was the, uh, uh, famous, uh, 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 sculpture, I guess, called Piss Christ, in which a picture of Christ was stuck in a whole thing of urine. Now, <clears throat> um, you know, on the, on the, uh, um, I guess Tommy is his name. I thought it was Tammy. But on the off chance, uh, Tommy, aren't you a little old to be called Tommy? I'm 37. I'm not old. You know, that sounds like, you know, hey, Tommy, let's go out and play ball. Uh, the uh, governor of uh, Wisconsin was Tommy Thompson for a while. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, Tommy, uh, as a evangelical Christian, very fairly conservative one, I was not insulted by that. He had every right to do whatever he wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Now his point. I is- was offended that the government paid money for it. That they took my tax dollars and considered it art. Um, that was, you know, my problem is that they were borrowing money because it was, we're, we're, you know, deficit spending. To so we borrowed money from somebody to pay this guy the money to do it. Um, that was my issue. So, just to let you know, Tommy, you, your 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 uh, first uh, um, uh, uh, exactly. point yeah. doesn't even doesn't even make it. Right now, all right. So he says that uh, sure you're free to hurl insults, but remember uh, that. The purpose of criticism is persuasion. No one has ever been persuaded by first being insulted. Uh, as Americans, we should f- fight like hell for the right to draw a picture of Muhammad and then choose not to. All right. You know, there's. I, w- I was looking around for more information on this. I found the Facebook page. Uh, I also found another article that says that uh, the uh, this this person... Uh, Molly Norris was the one who created it, this idea in the first place. And she's distanced herself from it. She's going, oh, whoa, 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 hold on a minute. Wait a minute here. Uh, you know, I, this was just a, a little thing that, and, and this article, which is on, uh, uh, LA Times, um, uh, basically says, all right, if you didn't want it distributed, why did you send it to a whole bunch of press people? <laughs> and, but it it went a little more viral than she wanted it to, and uh, so then the guy that that created the Facebook page also has distanced himself from it. Uh, John Wellington is his name, and uh, and 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 his point is: look, I was you know. Wanted to do this thing. I thought it was it was funny. I thought it would, um, here to me, it's all about freedom of expression, tolerance of other viewpoints. So I hope you'll help me make this a sandbox that anyone can play in if they want. I don't think it'd be right under the circumstances for me or anyone to censor inflammatory posts. But let's be welcoming and inclusive, okay? And um, the problem is, he says, I'm aghast that so many people are posting deeply offensive pictures of the prophet. Y'all go ahead if that's your bag, but count me out. <laughs> and the the blogger says, "Did he think that people were going to post flattering images?" <laughs> All right. Well, the other thing is too is who, who's who's posting them. Um, I was reading the other day that you know there is these um, 
about you talked about the Dutch pictures again. Remember those? Mm-hmm. And well, that's one of them, Muhammad drawn drawn to the body of a pig. Well, what they found out that was actually they were actually drawn by um, uh, imams from Switzerland hmm. who did it just to infl- just to inflame others. So uh, uh, that was the sole purpose of them doing that. Oh, oh, yeah. so it's sort of like when you see political signs um, in people's yards, either stolen or defaced. You can never be quite sure which side is doing it. Is it, is right. it done because people are against it, or is it done because people are trying to generate sympathy? <laughs> right. That's kind of you know that's the thing. So you kind of got to be aware, of, you know, aware of stuff like that. Um, you know, <laughs> you know. Again, I don't think insulting anything, but on the other hand, you know, I think. I, when you are South Park and you insult everyone, you know, uh, um, you can't, I mean, you know, actually it was, you know, one time they, um, I think one time they, they had a cartoon where Muhammad was pictured and stuff. And then, you know, South Park, then Comedy Central said, no, you can't do this. So the next time they, they had him, you know, in a moving van the whole time or, you know, wherever. He was always in the dark. You couldn't see his face or anything. Just like two little eye things. Oh, that's still too close. Um, you know. Yeah. I, you know, as, as far as I, a lot of these groups, you know, they said these groups are, are so inflammatory and everything, all the, the comments. And they said a lot of the comments or even a majority of them are posted by atheists on both groups just bashing religion in general. Right. Because yeah. people and, that and- set up both groups are atheists. Well, if there's a bright center of the universe, you're on the planet that it's farthest from. Yeah. I mean, I okay, I don't understand the whole not supposed to do pictures of Muhammad, but I'm not Muslim. So, you know, I, I can't really, I guess I can't really comment on that, um, especially when Jesus is probably the most depicted, um, you know, figure in artwork ever. Um, right. So, and and I consider that a good thing. As, although I, I don't think any of them actually look like him, <laughs> for the record. <laughs> um, but uh, it, it's all right. Is it is it gonna make a is it gonna make a point? Yes. Is it going to help in any sort of discussion? No. Uh, maybe a little bit about free speech, um, but not for the most part. Uh, you're much better off talking with people more individually and not starting out with an insult. So, I mean, he's got a point there. Now, his other point is that um, not just that that they're Facebook. He's he's mad that Facebook is allowing this. Well, I'm telling you, if Facebook banned everything offensive, they would have to remove half their site. Okay, um, because like, there's just no way that you could possibly police. Everything that's going on there it, that's, you know, that's remotely offensive or, or well, even and, really offensive. and offensive and who's who's mind what some one person says is offensive. Somebody else seems funny. Right. Um, yeah. See, to, to, I think the idea originally of everyone draw Muhammad Day was that it was supposed to really be kicking um, Comedy Central for its sheer hypocrisy. Mm-hmm. I mean. Uh, uh, they're also putting up a new cartoon called JC in which Jesus is, you know, decides just to leave and get rid of, get away from this apathetic father who just wants to be killed all the time. I mean, it's, a, it's highly offensive. Mm-hmm. And, but, oh, this is, can they say, oh, this is cutting edge comedy and, you know, it's not art if it doesn't make someone a little uncomfortable. Oh, but don't draw any pictures of Muhammad because, of course, we might get our place blown up if we do. But, oh, right. we have to admit that, <laughs> you know. Well, because yeah. that would be offensive. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it, it's a sheer hip, it's sheer, sheer hypocrisy. As one person simply said, it just goes to show that it's always safe to beat up Christians because you know they won't do anything. Mm-hmm. You know, so um, that was, I think, it was just you know, it's called, but the idea partly was to call them on their on on being for what they are being hip- hypocritical there. But you know, you know, oh jeez, you know. I, uh, uh, um, 
On the other hand, yeah, you, you did. It's the guy, this guy, as Tommy mentions, that both pages have been taken over by anti-religious zealots whose purpose is to stir up anger for the sake of electing even angry response. All heat, no light. You know, but you know what it is? Who cares? Do that's, your thing. Doesn't bother me. That's kind of Facebook discussions anyway. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I mean, honestly, so many of these groups, there's a whole lot of heat and very little light. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, uh, although I like his comment here, both pages are filled with drawings, manipulated photos, and commentary showing all religious leaders and acts of bestiality, pedophilia, and outrageous, and outrageous. An outrageous claims to calamities. Must be outrageous claims to calamities in history that religion couldn't possibly be held accountable for. Uh, even if you've never read hateful speech, you've probably never read such blind, ignorant rages as existent on these pages. Um, you know, Facebook has obliterated civilized discourse. Tommy, have you ever read the comment section of on any newspaper? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's I mean, sure. there is no civilized discourse. Yeah. You know? All right. So, speaking of no civilized discourse, let's talk about Glenn Beck. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was about to say, they all, just one more thing. Tommy, learn it right now, buddy. They used to say you take a million, you know, an infinite number of monkeys and an infinite number of typewriters, eventually you come up with Shakespeare. Thanks to the internet and the comment sections, we know that is not true. Yeah, that's been disproven. <laughs> yeah, you know, so yeah. Now let's talk about you know. Speaking of infinite number of monkeys, let's talk about Glenn Beck. <laughs> All right. So uh, Glenn Beck made the news uh, not too long ago, uh, saying uh, we discussed that him not too long ago. Yep, yep. We talked about him. Um, that if uh, he said if if you find the word social justice anywhere on your church's website, um, that you should leave your church. Uh, right. Which, of course, sparked me posting a blog post about social justice pretty much instantaneously right after that on our church website. Um, right. So, but now he says, ah, I was right. Because suddenly I went from religious zealot to a godless atheist animal in one sentence. I was a heretic, a heathen, and a hater. All right. Um, but now he says, Obama is merging the EPA with churches to make it easier for churches to get loans to green up and push green initiatives on their parishioners. On the one hand, if you don't cooperate, your 501c3 status could be in jeopardy. But if you help with the administration's agenda, why the government could help you build a new chapel. All right. A little bit of an exaggeration here. Um, because you... It, you know, they're not monitoring you going, well, make sure that you make your green sermons quota or something like that. I mean, that's ridiculous. Um, but uh, but he he's making the point that uh, President Obama is using faith-based offices to promote, uh, as he calls it, the gospel of Gaia. Um, the uh, Advisory Council on Faith-Based and Neighborhood Partnerships recently issued its report of recommendations um, and the council hopes the new EPA office will also help churches and other nonprofits improve access to financing, including establishing revolving loan programs or working with utility companies to help finance greening building projects. So I think trying to sort of like dig through this. Uh, I think that the point he's trying to make is that people got on President Bush's case because of all of his faith-based initiative stuff. And now President Obama is just, you know, he's taking it a step further or, or so he claims. I don't know if it's necessarily a step further. He's just talking to churches and saying, hey, here's an agenda I'm trying to push. And uh, I'd like you to join me in pushing that agenda. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, I think he's part of it, what he's going after is, um, again, hypocrisy uh, on the parts of some people. Uh, Helen Thomas, uh, you know, for you, you know, one of the oldest people, uh, uh, when Bush was uh, president, asked him at his first very his first press conference, said, "Why do you refuse to res respect the wall between church and state?" And you know that mixing of religion and government for centuries has led to slaughter. The fact our own country has stood stood in good stead by having the separation. Why do you break it down? 
So by doing these faith-based things, he started in his, his administration. It's bad. Uh, ACLU was up in arms. It's bad. So why isn't she? Well, of course, you can't ask him any questions because he won't take any questions. Oh, I forgot about that. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, he, you know, he, you know, go ahead and ask questions. I won't be answering them today. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I forgot about that. Um, God, but we don't hear about that very often, do we? Because anyway, um, but, uh, 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 um, no, okay. There's but then, this but quote. then, you know, the other question is, where's the ACLU in this? I mean, after all, you know, they, you know, they're, they're out there protecting kids from Christmas carols in schools and, you know, uh, the, 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 the horribleness of seeing a, where is, where is our friends, the Freedom from Religion Foundation? There you go. Yeah. You know, where are these people who, why aren't they up in arms if he's talking about the importance of, you know, helping churches, you know, learn how to be green? I think we should send a note to Annie Gaylor and say, hey, <laughs> help us out here. All right. Or your friends. <laughs> this is your opportunity. Go after him. All right. This this was really uh, this quote from uh, Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi on the subject of and this is not just the green thing, immigration reform on the subject of immigration, because I think the church is going to have to play a major, a very major role in how we how people are treated. The cardinals, the archbishops, the bishops, they come to me and say, we want you to pass immigration reform. And I said, but I want you to speak about it from the pulpit. I want you to instruct your, whatever the communication is, they, the people, some oppose immigration reform are sitting in those pews and you have to tell them that this is a manifestation of our living the gospels. All right. To wow, which, that was that was such a grammatically clear. Term. Yeah, I know, I'm so impressed. I know. But I read that, and and uh, you know, my my kids used to watch this show, Big Comfy Couch, and the main character on there, when she would come across something really bizarre, would go, "Hubba what?" <laughs> and that's exactly what I thought when I read this. Wait a minute, you're telling the churches to inst- to preach. That we need to pass immigration reform. But if these same Catholics told her, you're not a good Catholic because you're pro-choice, how dare you put, you know, try to restrict what I'm supposed to believe? Yeah. I'm sorry, but the government, any government, no matter what government is, should never be telling a pastor what to preach. Uh, Okay. Reality rises. This is this is just back to the old social gospel. This is Walter Rauschenbusch rehashed. Um, you know, this is is this is, um, yeah. You know, only in his day, it was progressive causes, minimum wage, living wage, uh, eight-hour day. Um, uh, I can't remember some of the other causes that they, you know, were part of the social gospel. And they said, you know, here's, this is what we need to be doing. This is, this is, you know, the gospel and our religion meet, meeting people on the street. Um, it's the same thing. It hasn't changed. It, you don't talk about Jesus. You talk about, you know, your, your pet social cause. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so you, um, you I, see, I'm I'm looking for the um, the 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 spot in the lectionary that talks about immigration reform. <laughs> yeah, it says be kind, be kind to the you know to the aliens among you. Um, right. Well, I, I had to had to you know one thing I had to give back you know credit for is that you know he said you know he he quotes Acts two forty two. And, you know, they gave everything up and, you know, this is such religion. Well, no, it doesn't say anything about giving it to the government. This yeah. is, you know, it was a private charity. So now, on the other hand, we also have to look at um, uh, some of Beck's helpers now, uh, like Jerry Falwell Jr. and Peter Lillebeck, uh, the president of uh, Westminster Seminary, who were on his program. And... Um, I had to kind of laugh. No, no, okay. So, so I mean, we have bad exegesis there from from Nancy Pelosi, but she's not a theologian. She's a slippery, slimy little politician. <laughs> um, if she lived in Massachusetts, she'd have relatives working in the probation department. Uh, anyway, so, uh, um, but so 
Falwell and this other guy are supposed to be theologians. And what do they say? Well, they say Jesus is clearly on the, um, uh, Falwell says that, um, Jesus taught personal charity, and he cited the parable of the talents as evidence that Jesus valued the free market and capitalism. <laughs> We're in trouble. You know, the only argument I've ever heard as sort of a biblical um, uh, of, in favor, you know, of, of capitalism and free market is um, Genesis three, the fall. And that is, and, and the idea was, and I think they tied in, um, the tower of Babel with this too. Um, but basically it was the idea that capitalism is based on the idea that, that the basic nature of man is selfish and evil. <laughs> All right. And capitalism forces a person, um, to help his neighbor because his livelihood depends on it. Um, whereas socialism is, is designed based on the idea that if, um, that everybody will out of the goodness of their heart contribute to the common good. And if they don't, the government's going to force you to. <laughs> right. And, and so, um, yeah, so, so capitalism, yeah, you don't, you're forced to help your neighbor, it, to go against your sinful nature and to help your neighbor anyway. And, uh, which I, I thought was well, actually, that was about the best argument I ever heard, is, you know, as far as a, actually, of, well, I think, you know, from the Bible. Well, somebody once said, though, the only problem with socialism is eventually you run out of other people's money. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, um, uh, the, the, you know, look, there is no biblical method of economic theory. Right. I'm sorry. They're just, <laughs> Any. Except maybe monarchy. Hey, <laughs> you, know. you know, I mean, there's, there's no, there's, you know, um, you know, uh, J- Jerry Falwell Jr. And they'll, he also quote, this is from Christianity Today I'm quoting from. It's also a guy from the American Family Association, Brian Fisher, uh, says, Jesus, as much as Wallace, well, I hate to admit it, had capitalism in his DNA. It's, this, that's silliness. It's forgetting that they're, you know, that, that both of them make the mistake of try, of, of neglecting the two kingdoms. They make the kingdom of God something on this earth. Mm-hmm. The kingdom of God is not something on this earth. The kingdom of God is otherworldly. And any human situation you set up is always going to be falling apart. Yep. Inherently flawed. Inherently flawed. By the nature of sin, um, you know, and uh, now Glenn Beck, being a Mormon, would indeed happen to see very well the, uh, um, you know, what a faith-based organization can do. I mean, because the Mormon Church has wonderful things, and they, as far as I know, don't take government money. Uh, one of the problems, of course, is the fact that when you take government money, they, you know, the, the rule basically is then you're neutered from talking about your faith. Right. Uh, and that's a problem I have. I mean, what good's that? Then one thing that President uh, uh, Bush, his idea was, um, I think, was that you could take get government money and still remain religious. Yeah, you, know, you didn't have to put the crosses away. I, I remember when that that whole thing first started going out, and uh, the Missouri Senate uh, put out a a uh, statement on the whole faith based initiative thing, and it was sort of like, okay, let's tread cautiously here, <laughs> right? Even though one of the people who was behind it, of course, happened to be a Missouri Senate Lutheran guys working in the office, but absolutely, that's the problem, um, you know. Uh, I'm inherently suspicious of government. I live in Massachusetts. Before that, I lived in Illinois. So, you know, I should be suspicious of government. <laughs> um, but whenever there's money, there's almost always a string attached. You know, uh, unless there's something good, a good reason for it. Uh, when I was at uh, seminary, I was amazed that they had told us that um, they had just gotten a big grant from the government like a year or two before to completely revamp the uh, heating and cooling system. 
uh, to make it more energy efficient. You know, because that was something that they said, you know, this is just cause spending, you, you know, you know, the government really carried the fact that they were wasting a lot of power and a lot of electricity and a lot of uh, stuff on, on the on the heating and air conditioning system. So they got this grant to everything was, um, well, the state of the art as you got it, the early 1980s, um, mm-hmm. to, to regulate the heating and cooling throughout the buildings. And they said, you know, they saw like a 30 percent reduction in their power costs. You know, that was also in the government's interest, to, to, you know, but uh, otherwise, I just soon just stay away from government money because there's always a string attached. Yep. Yep. However, talking about other foolish people, let's talk about this uh, um, uh, hospital nun. All right. All right. So this is in Phoenix, um, and her name is Sister Margaret McBride. She's on the ethics committee. Uh, that included doctors consulting with a young woman who was 11 weeks pregnant late last year. And the woman was suffering from um, it's a heart disease. A life, yeah, yeah. Um, the key thing is, though, if she had not had an abortion, everybody agreed her life was at stake. Yep. Um, and had no good, there's just almost no question um, oh, here it is. The patient who has not been identified was seriously ill with pulmonary hypertension. The condition limits the ability of the heart and lungs to function, and it is made worse, possibly even fatal, by pregnancy. Um, right. So, so uh, here's the situation. And, um, uh, and according, according to a letter, uh, the pregnancy carried a nearly certain risk of death for the mother. So uh, this nun and a group of doctors and others uh, opted for the abortion at this Catholic hospital. And according to Catholic teaching, if you allow abortion for any reason whatsoever, you're automatically excommunicated. Right. Well, she no. hasn't been excommunicated, but she has been reassigned. Um, they they do allow for um, if it's abortion is due to a second uh, secondary effect. Um, of other treatments such as radiation of a cancerous uterus, which, uh, yeah, that's that's going to do it. Um, so, all right. So here's the situation: she's 11 weeks pregnant. All right, she's going to die. If she's going to die, then guess who else is going to die too? <laughs> the baby in her uterus. So if the baby's going to die either way, wouldn't it be better to at least save the mother? Find a happy place! Find a happy place! Find a happy place! Um, but apparently not. Although it's just sort of an automatic thing. Um, it, you know, it, it's it's sort of like, you know, you when you, um, when when you go to go to the web uh, website and um you want to you're you're filling out oh i okay it's like when when jim you ever get those phone calls from people that well i you don't cuz you you own your own home but all right we live in a parsonage all right and and we get phone calls from people and they say uh they say do you rent or own your home and we say no <laughs> <laughs> And they don't know what to do because they don't have a, a flip book page for that. <laughs> All right. Well, this is like, did you, this is like Martin Luther standing up and they go, um, and, and they say to him, did you write these things? Uh, yeah. Do you recant of them? Do you take it all back? <laughs> he says, um, well, given that a bunch of the stuff that's here, you guys would actually agree with. <laughs> I don't think you want me to take it all back, <laughs> right? It's a but it's a sort of black and white, yes or no. Um, all right, can we actually have some sense and actually look at the situation and and take a you know consider all of the and and say, well, you know what, this was a really hard decision to make, but they did right. what they had to do. Right. It's you know. 
I don't know. There, 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 there's an, you know, kind of an absolutism on both sides. You know, I was just reading an article by, uh, um, Carol Campbell, who writes for the, um, St. Louis Post Dispatch. And she was talking about, um, you know, this, this whole thing of, uh, you know, this absolutism on, on the side of feminists and, and when it comes to abortion. Um, well, here there is an absolutism on the other side that is equally wrong. Um, you know, as long as I've been around, you know, going dealing with this stuff, uh, I always, you know, people, the, you know, it's always, you know, the life of the mother has always been an exception. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is, you know, how often this happens. This is extremely rare. Mm-hmm. Extremely. You know, but, you know, as, um, you know, I, 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 you know, somebody once told me, and it, it sounds kind of cold, but you can always try to have another child. It's real hard to find another wife. <laughs> well, and, yeah, if you let her die, the child's going to die, too. Yeah, you know, so now, is it, it is it better to have two deaths on your hands or just one? Right, exactly. It's just... I'm sorry, but this is just, this is just insanity. All right. This is the kind of thing. All right. We were, uh, in our, our Bible class this evening. We were talking about all the atrocities that have been done, um, in the name of Christianity that were not, you know, and this was the article that we were working on, um, as we were wrapping up our responding to atheism, um, Bible, Bible study. And, um, and he was, he was blaming, the Bible for all of these different atrocities and, and things. And, and, you know, it was, I said, this is like blaming an ax for a murder. It was used in a way that was not intended by its creator. Right. And, um, and, and so the same here that you're, what you're doing is, is you're, you're blaming, you're saying, Oh, this is, this is bad. Or, you know, abortion is bad. Well, yeah, it is. But, Unfortunately, in extremely rare situations, it is necessary. That doesn't make it any easier. That doesn't make it, it doesn't make it any less a tragedy. Okay? Right. It doesn't make it any better. It's the lesser of two evils. Right. And the key word there is not lesser, it's evil. Mm-hmm. You know, it's still an evil. But, you know, you're, you're trying to do what is less evil. Right. Yeah, what this, what this woman needed was not excommunication. It was absolution. Right. It was, yep. But, uh, you're, you had to choose between two evils. You're going to sin either way. All right. Right. So God forgives you. All right. You're, you know, that's why Jesus well, here died we're to, for you. To the, yeah. Here we're back to the Lutheran ethical option of sinning boldly. Sin boldly, Luther wrote to his friend Melanchthon, but believe more boldly still. Yeah, you know, this is, uh, you know, and it's sad. It's, it's just, you know, but, you, you know, uh, uh, but there's no, yeah, there seems to, you know, I, I really, I, I have a hard time with this. It just seems awfully hard-hearted, hard, awfully hard-headed, too. Um, you know, and if, if, if it was just, if, you know, seems to me, you know, the nun made the best decision she could. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know. Well, this kind of stuff, you want to, you just want to go to the bishop and go, all right, what would you do in this situation? You know? I, I, I want your, all right, what should she have done? What would be the better option? You know? There's this, this great quote from a, it was a, a Spider-Man comic from, um, of all things, uh, from, that was put out by UNICEF. Um, and, and where Spider-Man is, has promised that he will not, um, he he will not testify against Venom, and then he ends up doing it. And Venom goes, Captain America wouldn't have done that if he made a promise. He would have kept his promise. And and Spider Man says, Captain America is a legend. I'm just a man. You know, and so and it's like, and and I love that because yeah. You know, you find these situations, you go like, what would Jesus do, right? Because Jesus never sinned. All right, what would he do in this situation? Well, he would just heal her. <laughs> you <know>? Right. <laughs> Easy, man. He would have healed both of them. Yeah, he just healed them and done with it, you know. But, 
<laughs> well, they don't have that luxury. Right, right. So it's like, you know, okay, so what would, what's the, the sort of the optimal way to, um, you know, to, to handle this? I don't know because I only see two options here. I don't know. I can't find a third option. All right. And we can't, and, and like the Rush song, I'm getting my theology from all over the place tonight. <laughs> if you choose not to decide, you still have made a choice. Speaking of decisions, let's finish off here by talking about the um, uh, Texas School Board. All right Now, Texas, like California, is one of the biggest textbook markets in the country. And Texas has a very interesting thing is that they have a um, uh, a board... And that board adopts the curriculum. Now, because they are by far the biggest textbook, one of the, one of the biggest textbook uh, 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 consumers in the country, because of their size and the number of schools they've got, what they say is often then de facto pushed on, on almost every other state in the union. Uh, and um, so they said um, that they made some decisions, and it says. Um, uh, they will be required to learn that the words separation of church and state are not in the Constitution. And they'll have to evaluate whether the United Nations undermines U.S. sovereignty, yeah, undermines U.S. sovereignty. They also have to say that the United States government is a constitutional republic, not democratic. It jeopardizes my ability to effectively govern this student body. The first one is true. The second one is... Uh... As long as they're allowed to deliberate and debate on it, I don't see a problem with that. And the third one's absolutely true, too, and it irritates me when I hear people say democracy when it's really not. <laughs> it causes a lot of confusion when you end up with a situation like the, the Bush-Gore vote, um, where, you know, afterward, Gore was going around going, um, oh, this is a democracy. Like, no, dude, it's not. <laughs> He said it's not a constitution. It's a constitutional republic. Well, until the progressive era, the you know senators were not elected by the, the people of the state. You know, so yeah, it's true. But anyway, I, I, now you know the U.S. Education Secretary um, said uh, such decisions be made at local level, and school officials should keep politics out of curriculum the debates. Uh, parents should be very wary of politicians designing curriculum. Duncan. Has it ever occurred to you, sir, that you're a politician? <laughs> and you're at an education department? And you're appointed there by a politician? And the department was made by politicians? I mean, you know, I, isn't this a little ironic that you're worried, being telling people to be wary of politicians designing curriculum? Hey, and by the way. It, did He's, you ever know that 20% of the people at uh, the Democratic National Convention last year were teacher union members? My office is right across that hall. Any monkey business is ill-advised. And Dale has no sound. Uh, Do you hear me now? Yes. Did I? Oh, I sneezed into the microphone before, didn't I? Yes. Sorry about that. <laughs> All of a sudden, my allergies are just flaring up. Um, I was, flipped the switch in the wrong direction. Lost lost track of whether I was muted or not. <laughs> Sorry. Um. So the uh, the 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 Christian angle on this, or the the religious angle, is that the um. Uh, Oh, I just had it. Here we go. Uh, it strengthened requirements on teaching the Judeo-Christian influences of the nation's founding fathers. Right. So this sort of that whole um, is the is is you is America a Christian nation? And uh, and we've talked about that before. That uh, no, it's it's not really. the The Bible had a, a pretty significant influence um, right. on the founding fathers, uh, but it's not a Christian nation per se. But the, well, I mean, they're be. not saying that, right? But I, I, I think talk about you know, and, and, and you know, uh, and then later on talked about yeah, that 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 you know, you you know, highlight the fact that I guess the direction of of church and state, you know, it's not a, um, okay, 
These are social studies and history textbooks. There is no such thing as pure history. There are only interpretations of history. Right. Um, and that's, you know, and, you know, Secretary Duncan, to the contrary, um, you're always going to have, um, you know, the, the how that history is interpreted and how it's taught in a classroom are always going to be the subject of political political debate and consequence. Yep. Well, it, you know, it, it's like I would say that with um, with newscasters, that when it lists their their name across the the bottom, you know, that it should also list their um, you know, it should say like you know Tom Brokaw, D, New York, you know, because <laughs> I mean, let's face it. Every every uh, news reporter has a bias. Well, guess what? So does every teacher. All right. Right. No matter how much they try to be um, not, you know, to not show their bias, it's going to show. All right. So let's just be honest about it and say, this is my bias. <laughs> right. So, you know, by all means, filter things. You know, it, it, it says that... Um, the educators have um, uh, oh here we go um, former board chairman Don McElroy uh, one of the board's most outspoken conservatives said the Texas history curriculum has been unfairly skewed to the left after years of Democrats controlling the board and he just wants to bring it back into balance this is like Fox News balance you know <laughs> Yeah. Well, the last one gets me. Educators have blasted curriculum proposals for politicizing education. Teachers have also said the documents are too long and will force students to memorize lists of names rather than learn to critically think. You know, I just, well, first off, I'll tell you what. Um, you know, we, I think there needs to be, and before you can teach students to critically think, they need to have some basic facts down in order to have something to think about. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you know, and please, educators, you're members of a union. You know, don't go talk. About, your union gives money overwhelmingly to Democrats. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Please. Don't, you know, uh, get upset about people politicizing education. <laughs> At my daughter's public school back in Springfield. I mean, I saw some most overtly political stuff. From the faculty members. Oh, my daughter would come home complaining about her social studies class, the about the um, the teacher comparing uh, the Iraq War with Vietnam, and you know, and and just constantly bashing President Bush and, and all this kind of stuff. It's like, and she gets so irritated by it. She's like, I'm trying to learn history here, and all I'm getting is politics <laughs> and one sided. Right. You know. But that is politicizing education. So, you know, I mean, and if you take a look at what's going on, a lot of edu- uh, 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 um, yeah, education colleges, yeah, education departments in schools, in, in colleges, mm-hmm. you know, they're politicizing education. There, there are certain values really, again, you know, from the left that, you know, they're, they're threatening. If you don't uphold these, these, these teachings, these values, we will not uh, give you an education degree. So, which is the advantage, by the way, of private colleges. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, but, you know, but not everybody can afford a private college. Uh, and when you figure that, like, for example, the state of Massachusetts, um, if you go to, um, if you go to, uh, uh, um, UMass, uh, one of the U, uh, UMass colleges and you become a teacher, they will, there is forgiveness for student loans. For being a public school teacher, although you start off, you know, with a pretty de- a really decent salary, and if you can stick it out for thirty years, you can retire with ninety percent ninety percent of your pay at age fifty five, and no medical benefit, no uh, and free medical care the rest of your life. But we won't talk about that. Uh, but again, you know, but there's this this bias towards the the public uh, college system, and which is saying, have here's what you need to do. I mean, you know, there's, you know. <sighs> I have a problem (coughs) 
teachers want to be treated as professionals. Professionals don't have unions. Hmm. Good point. Labor has unions. Yep. Hey, God, my brilliant! You know, professionals, there's no doctor's union, there's no lawyer's union. It's the nature of being a professional, there's not a union. Mm. So we don't have a pastor's union? That's right. We don't have a pastor's union. Uh, you know, and, uh, and you, you know, and you can't go off, you know, back as, as a organization, backing a one side of government and then complaining that education gets politicized. Yeah. Yeah. yeah doesn't make any sense. <clears throat> so, but I, I remember when I was in, uh, back in 1990, there was a, the first Gulf War. And there's a sixth grade teacher on the news, and she had her sixth grade class out protesting the uh, first Gulf War. Oh, yeah, I, just, I remember that. And I just sat and I, well, I remember seeing that on the news, and I just said, if I, my kid was in that classroom, I'd pull my kid out. And I, and if they said to me, if they came after, came after me for it, I would say, my kid's there to learn, not to protest a war. You deal with the teacher taking my kid out there and forcing my kid to protest the war. Right, yeah, because you're, you're forcing a one per, particular political viewpoint. On a sixth grade kid. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Oh. oh, but we're politicizing education. Can't do that. It's a bad thing. I've always said that Teachers need to teach kids how to think, not what to think. But, I mean, the simple reality is is that uh, no matter how you do it, you know, just what you choose to teach them. And, you know, that's what the big issue here is. Oh, they don't like the fact that um, that they're telling them that separation of church and state does not appear in the Constitution. Okay, well, that's an objective fact. All right? So you can complain about why... They don't want that emphasized. You can complain about the emphasis of it. You can't complain about them teaching that fact. Because that's a fact. All right. So you want to complain about them emphasizing that? Fine. Okay. Um, and you can, you can emphasize what Jefferson said in the letter and the context of the letter. But, oh, uh, well. Let's just end it here before we both. We, we both got to go to bed tonight. It's getting late. Yeah, it is. Hey, everybody, thank you. Maybe you've got all got an opinion. Maybe we think you think we're all washed up. Maybe you want to, you know, send us a fourth anniversary picture of Muhammad. I don't know what you guys <laughs> want to do. Knowing us, we'll post it, or I will. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then Jim will send all the terrorists after me. <laughs> Ohio, O H I O. So no longer Iowa, Ohio. Buckeye State. Anyway, at podcast at crossfeednews.com. Yep. So thanks, everybody. And, and, you know, if you want to send us a note that says, um, you know, four years is enough. <laughs> Let's not try for a fifth. <laughs> That's fine, too. We'll take that. Whatever. <laughs> yep. So <laughs> we won't listen, but, you know. <laughs> We're having too much fun. But thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, have today's Pentecost and so um, and uh, next week's Trinity Sunday. So have a very blessed um, uh, week and, and rejoice in the, uh, the Holy Spirit has given you faith, I uh, hope, and, um, and that, uh, that God has revealed himself to us as a God of love. So, good night, everybody, and God bless.